first station, Jesus is judged. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after flogging Jesus, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led Jesus into the courtyard of the Praetorium, the governor's headquarters, with the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple robe, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. Excruciating pain, blood, humiliation. Let us pray. For global leaders, politicians, government officials, especially those in our own country, that they may seek the common good of peace, equity, and justice, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic. And let us pray for ourselves when we judge others and for those we condemn, when we stand judged or condemned rightly or wrongly, that we may know the witness and humility of Christ. Amen. The second station, Jesus receives his cross betrayed, deserted, alone, splinters, heavy, rough wood, the scent of the hill country, a single beam laid across the back of a carpenter, the crowd jeers, the procession to Golgotha, the place of the skull begins. Let us pray. For all first responders, police, firemen, prison officers, and those carry, required to carry out death sentences and corporal punishment. For those who bully and torment others, and for those who are bullied and tormented. For all victims of violence, and those who commit violence against others. And let us pray for ourselves when we bully, insult, or hurt others when we ourselves are hurt or put down, that any suffering we may have to endure may be fruitful for ourselves and for others as was Christ's suffering, and that we may be preserved from indifference to the suffering of others. Amen. The third station, Jesus falls for the first time. Stumble, waver, collapse. Jesus' sweat mingles with dust as he falls to the earth, the weight of the sins of the world on his shoulders. Barely able to stand, he cannot carry the cross without falling. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we account him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. Let us pray. For those who are weak and in pain, especially those living with cancer, heart disease, and mental illness. For those who are hospitalized and experience physical exhaustion. For those who have COVID-19 and are weak and afraid. For those suffering the frailty of advanced age. And let us pray for those who care for those who are sick, especially with COVID-19. And for doctors, nurses, social workers, counselors, therapists, support staff, and all clergy throughout the world. And let us pray for ourselves when we face sickness, physical weakness, and exhaustion, when we experience fear and panic, that we may know the power of Christ's experience on the cross. Amen. The fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. The angel Gabriel, mother and child, Madonna. This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Joseph has died. There is no angelic choir, no shepherds, no wise men. Gone are the gold, frankincense, and myrrh. 
Mary sees her battered son through a veil of tears. Let us pray in thanksgiving for the example, love, and prayers of Mary, the mother of Jesus, and for our own mothers and fathers, in thanksgiving for all the love and joy that they have brought us. For those living on this side of the narrow curtain of death, especially those with COVID-19 and those who have died and are living beyond it. Let us pray for those to whom we are mother or father physically or spiritually, that they may grow in wisdom and stature and in favor with God themselves, with others. And let us pray for ourselves as children and as parents that we know the love, commitment, and gentleness of Mary and of Jesus in all our relationships, and that we, like Mary, may treasure all these things in our hearts. Amen. The fifth station, Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus carry the cross. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country and they laid the cross on him and made him, made him carry Jesus' cross. Stranger, neighbor, friend. Simon takes up the cross, in so doing, takes up his own. Another innocent man joins the procession to Calvary. Let us pray. As Simon was from Africa, we pray for all the peoples of Africa, for those countries in Africa that are experiencing elevated cases of COVID-19 and find medical help is limited, for aid organizations who are trying to bring treatment and stability to the region. And let us pray for those who suffer because of color, race, or creed, for the removal of all barriers that separate all peoples, nations, cultures, and believers, for a growing appreciation of the contributions that different race and cultures make to art, design, and music in our world. And let us pray for ourselves, for those who help us carry our burdens in this life, for strangers who stop to care for others in distress, for an appreciation of the differences that make the fabric of humanity, that we may be freed from the any prejudice based on sex, race, color, religion, sexual orientation, social or economic status. And then we will be receptive to serving others in need while on our own spiritual journey. Amen. The sixth station. Veronica wipes Jesus' brow. Cloth. Sweat. Blood. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, and as one from whom others hid their faces. He was despised, and we held him of no account. Legend tells of a woman wiping Jesus' face and gaining an image of Christ painted in his blood on her cloth. In relieving the suffering of others, we too find the face of Jesus. Let us pray. In thanksgiving for all who see with God's eyes and who recognize love and beauty where we may see only ugliness and squalor, for every act and occasion of compassion and caring, and for all who see God present in those who are suffering. And let us pray that our eyes may be opened to see beauty where God sees beauty, that we may be given a heart open to compassion and hands ready to comfort and console, that others may see in us a true vision of God. Amen. The seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. Oppressed, afflicted, silently suffering. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. Let us pray. 
in humility and gratitude for God's mercy and forgiveness, that mercy may always temper justice. And we pray for those who suffer mental weakness and fatigue, for the anxious, the lonely, and the distressed, for those suffering from senility, dementia, and Alzheimer's, and for all those who care for them, their families, friends, and members of the caring professions. And let us pray for ourselves, that we may be forgiving and merciful for those we have hurt or offended, and that whenever we see someone in pain, we may recognize Christ in them and Christ in us. Amen. The Eighth Station Jesus Talks to the Weeping Women Tears, wailing, daughter, mothers, grief. A great multitude of the people followed Jesus, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Let us pray for all women everywhere especially for those women who have to watch husbands, sons, daughters, sisters, brothers, or children suffer under the COVID-19 pandemic. For those who mourn loved ones killed or wounded in violence not of their own making. For the women of Jerusalem today, Jews, Christians, Muslims, Palestinians, Arabs, Israelis, Armenians, and others who suffer from military occupation, displacement, or separation from families. Let us pray in penitence and sorrow for each time right is obscured by might, for every time the powerful are given undue respect, while the weak and powerless, the poor and dispossessed are ignored and rep repressed. And let us pray for ourselves, that the Holy Spirit will give us the mind of Christ to love and respect those who are oppressed, and to know Christ's dignity when we suffer in dignity. Amen. The Ninth Station. Jesus falls for the third time. Brutalized, dazed, beyond strength. Now nearly on Calvary's broad summit, Jesus collapses. Poles long set into the ground are silhouetted against gray clouds. Impatiently, Jesus is pulled up and shoved toward his death. For we do not know, do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who is every, in every respect has been tested as we are, yet is without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us pray for those who experience moral weakness and failure, for those who know what it is to lose their faith, for those who have lost hope in this world or the next, for those who are at the very limits of their mental, physical, spiritual, or moral strength. And let us pray for those who counsel the despairing or suicidal, for chaplains and those who minister in prisons and hospitals, for those who answer hotlines, and for those who without special training are sought out by needy neighbors. And let us pray for ourselves, when all seems to be working against us and there seems to be no hope, for our witness when called upon to point to hope, then help us to remember Jesus' patience, presence, and resolve when facing the cross. Amen. The Tenth Station. Jesus is stripped of his garments. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. King of glory, 
Prince of Peace, stripped bare, the crown of thorns is all that remains. One possession remains, his life. Holding nothing back, Jesus offers this last gift. Darkness, clouds, weeping. Let us pray for those who attempt to shame, humiliate, and degrade others by word or action. For those who exploit others racially, sexually, intellectually, or economically. So for those who would divide us into superior and inferior classes. For those who would take advantage of others when they are down and wounded. And let us pray for ourselves when we are feeling less than being a child of God when we want to hide because we are feeling inferior. Help us always to remember that we are precious in God's eyes. Amen. The Eleventh Station, Jesus is Crucified. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. Cold steel, warm flesh, nails rip through tendon and muscle. Blood soaks into splintered wood. Jesus responds, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Let us pray in awe and gratitude that we stand before the mystery of the cross. Here we know that God loved the world so much that he gave his son to this kind of suffering and this kind of death. That Jesus accepted this suffering and death out of love for us, that we may share his risen life. And we acclaim Jesus as the Christ, fountain of our salvation and healing. Let us pray for those who would destroy that which is good, that which is sacred, beautiful, and true. For every attempt to suppress the truth and good news of Jesus crucified. And for all who are persecutors of Christ's church and God's children in the world. And for any who are persecuted or oppressed for any reason. And let us pray for ourselves that when we ever are called into account for our faith, we may understand and incorporate into our lives the way of the cross, allowing sin, suffering, and death to be broken on the rock of love and refusing to retaliate against evil with evil. Amen. The Twelfth Station. Jesus dies on the cross. Despised, rejected. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. From top to bottom, the veil in the temple was torn in two. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was God's son. Let us pray for ourselves. In our last days, in our last hour, in gratitude that because of the loneliness of Jesus on the cross, no one need ever die alone or without hope. Let us pray for those who care for the dying, their families, friends, nurses, doctors, counselors, priests, and the communion of saints. For all those who do hospice for the dying and those who staff them for those caring for those with COVID-19. And let us pray for all persons who have died, whoever they may be, that they may know Jesus and share his risen and eternal life. Amen. The 13th station. The body of Jesus is placed in the arms of his mother. Morning, mother broken child. The sword of grief pierces her soul. Women surround her, but none can comfort her. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices and linen cloths, according to the custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where the, he was crucified, 
and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Let us pray for the dead, especially the growing number of those who have died because of the COVID-19 pandemic, especially those we have known and loved, remembering them in our hearts for those who have influenced us for good. And let us pray for those who mourn, for those who care for the bereaved, for the healing of pain and grief. And let us pray for ourselves whenever we eat the bread and drink the cup of salvation in thanksgiving that Jesus Christ gave his body to be broken for us and his blood to be shed for us. Amen. The 14th station. Jesus' body is placed in the tomb. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting opposite the tomb. Cold stone, a shroud, darkness, Sabbath rest, at last. Lord Jesus Christ, we come to the lonely cross and we see you stripped, we see you murdered, we see you deserted. Lord Jesus Christ, we come to the empty tomb and we see our own death, we see our own tomb, we see our own emptiness. Lord Jesus Christ, we come to the empty tomb we see the COVID-19 pandemic sending the world into fear and uncertainty, pain and suffering, loss of life, untold repercussions from unemployment and a damaged economy. We see lack of medical supplies and healthcare workers and concern for the underserved and their health and safety. Lord Jesus Christ, we come to the empty tomb we face you as never before, as the one forgotten, the one oppressed, the one pushed aside, the one left out. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Amen.